have two lessons. <clears throat> in one lesson we will explain kidneys and in the second lesson we will explain uh, we will explain ureter, urinary bladder and urethra. Okay? Now kidneys. Kidneys, well first of all, urinary system is itself divided into uh, urinary urine production organs which happen to be kidneys and the tract which uh, is a passageway for the urine. So, uh, kidneys are paired organs, okay, which are located in the abdominal cavity retroperitoneally, okay, those are retroperitoneal organs. What it means retroperitoneal, remind me. Extra peritoneal located extra behind peritoneal. So these are retroperitoneal organs. And um, also kidneys are, uh, well, as I said, those are, we have a couple of them, and those are located somewhat differently. If you look here, you will see that right kidney is a little bit lower than the left one. Uh, this is anterior view, okay? This is anterior, and somewhere was posterior. But anyways, okay, so why do you think is right, uh, our right one is more uh, lower located than the left one? How do you think? Hmm? How do you think? Because of liver. Of uh, liver, of course, because liver is a large organ. <laughs> so, right one is located between 12 thoracic vertebra until fourth lumbar vertebra and the left one is located between between 11th thoracic vertebra until third lumbar vertebra so the difference is one vertebra okay okay now um, kidneys have anterior and posterior surfaces medial and lateral margins and superior and inferior extremities or the ends, okay? Anterior and posterior surfaces, medial and lateral margins, and superior and inferior extra, uh, ends or extremities. On the superior end is uh, located, or is sitting, adrenal gland, okay? Now, um, here on the medial, um, on the medially, as you see, here we have uh, hilus uh, uh, renalis. Hilus we had for pulmonis, hilus pulmonis. What was this hilus? Remind me. Um, it's, in the it's an entrance to different things. So in this case, it's an entrance and also the point where the things are leaving kidneys. So what is entering kidneys in the hilus region? First of all, renal artery. Then uh, we have here renal artery is entering kidneys and it's a branch of um, um, abdominal aorta then we have i mean abdominal aorta i'm sorry then we have renal vein which leaves kidney and enters inferior vena cava and then we have renal pelvis which is also leaving kidney and uh, joining ureter turning into an ureter okay so, first of all, we have uh, renal artery, I will repeat, we have renal artery, which is a branch of abdominal aorta and is entering kidney. Then we have renal vein, which is leaving the kidney and uh, joining inferior vena cava. And then we have renal pelvis, which is turning into ureter. Now, ureter, we have a couple of them, you know that. Then we have a urinary bladder and then we have uretra, right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> so kidneys in general are uh, organs of parenchyma. They consist of parenchyma. Parenchyma is a glandular tissue. You are supposed to know that by this time. So it has parenchyma. Now, before we talk about parenchyma itself, we have to know what are covering kidneys. <coughs> kidneys are covered with three coats, okay? The outermost coat is uh, called renal fascia, 
which is part of retroperitoneal fascia itself. And this renal fascia is some kind of a connective tissue, okay? Then we have after that um, adipose capsule. And do you know adipose tissue? Do you know adipose tissue? Tissue, what is adipose tissue? Then we have adipose tissue, and this adipose tissue is a, a fatty tissue, which is adipose capsule is covering after that. And then finally, the innermost is fibrous tissue, fibrous coat, okay? So we have three uh, types of the coat for the uh, kidneys. The outermost is fascia, renal fascia. Then we have adipose capsule, and then we have fibrous capsule, okay? Now, after that we have, and, and actually this adipose capsule is very important because of its uh, protection of the uh, kidneys and because of its fixation also. Because adipose capsule is the thickest one between these and it pr protects. So that's why people are not supposed to lose very quickly. If you lose very quickly, this adipose capsule can go away and it's really bad for the health. Now, about parenchyma. Parenchyma itself uh, in general, in general, um, kidneys consist of parenchyma and consist of sinus, okay, renal sinus. So, this is renal parenchyma, this is renal sinus. In renal parenchyma is a place, this is a place where happens urinary production, okay? So, urine is produced in the parenchyma. In the renal sinus, uh, this urine is it's a passageway, it's uh, transported there and then through the sinus it goes to the ureter. So, before we talk about parenchyma, the sinus uh, consists of itself, consists of three parts, minor calyxes, major calyxes and uh, then we have renal pelvis. So, here we have minor calyxes. Then we have major calyxes, which actually are two to three in number in each kidney. And then finally we have renal pelvis, which then joins ureter, okay? So these, all these parts of this renal sinus are a passageway for the urine. Now, how, what about this um, parenchyma, uh, where the urine is produced? Uh, for parenchyma, we have cortex, which is located uh, peripherally, cortex and medulla, okay? Cortex and medulla. Medulla is present in a shape of a pyramid. You see, these, these, these are medulla. So medulla is present as a pyramid. Cortex is um, per located peripherally and gives us columns. Columns are part of the cortex, which are located between these um, pyramids, okay? Now, about um, this pyramid has the medullar part, the pyramid has apex and it has a base. With the base it's facing cortex, with the apex it's facing the sinus. And in the region of the apex, pyramids have papillae, foramina, and those are these uh, tra transmitters or like the passageway. From there goes the urine, okay? here, uh, and the region of the apex. Now, um, before we talk about uh, these uh, nephrons, in general, the structural and functional units of the kidneys are called nephrons, okay? Structural and functional units of the kidneys are called nephrons. Uh, and it's nearly, as far as I remember, one million nephron in each uh, kidney, and nephrons can't regenerate. If the nephron dies, the nephron is dead, it can't come back, okay? So that's why uh, you have to be real careful with the kidneys. And, but the, the good thing about the nephrons is that when people are taking out, for example, the other kidney, it can, nephrons can enlarge and they, they can take on themselves this function. So they enlarge, but they don't regenerate. Okay. So, before we talk about nephrons, um, we have to talk about the blood supply of the kidneys. So, as we said, the uh, renal artery is entering kidney, right? Then this renal artery gives us anterior and posterior branches, which is not shown on this picture. Anterior and posterior branches. Then these anterior and posterior branches 
give us segmental arteries, segmental branches. And through that, you can see here. Whatever you see here, these are pyramids, okay? This and this. So this is, uh, first of all, pyramid along with its um, corresponding cortex is called lobe, okay? Pyramid with its corresponding cortex is called a lobe. So these are two pyramids here, this one and two. So this, after we said that it gives us segmental branches, right? So then we have inter interlobal uh, arteries. Interlobar means that it's located between the lobes. So these are interlobal arteries. <coughs> then these interlobal arteries give us arcuate arteries or arcuate branches, okay? These and these. And then these arcuate branches give us straight arteries which are supplying blood for the pyramids and give us interlobular arteries, interlobular arteries. Then these interlobular arteries give us afferent uh, arterioles, but we will talk about that separately because that's um, on the different picture. So I will repeat this whole hallway. After this uh, renal artery and enters kidney, it gives us anterior and posterior branches. Then they give us segmental branches. Then they give us interlobal arteries. Then interlobal give us arcuate arteries, which itself give us straight arteries and interlobular arteries, which turn then into afferent arterioles. Now we will talk about that. And let's look at this picture because this picture is an enlarged version of <coughs> that one. So these are afferent arterioles. We stopped there, right? Afferent arteri arterioles, then you see how they are carved, give us glomerulus, and after glomerulus, we have afferent arterioles. So first we have afferent arterioles, then we have glomerulus, and then we have afferent arterioles. Now this happens inside the nephron. Nephron itself consists of two parts, corpuscle and tubular parts. Corpuscal and tubular. Corpuscle is whatever you see here. So this is a portion of the nephron, and which is called what? Corpuscle. So in cor for the corpuscle, what is corpuscle? Corpuscle is afferent arterial, glomerulus, afferent arterial, and its surrounding capsule, okay? This, whatever is around, is called capsule. So that is the corpuscular part of the nephron. Now, after here in this um, glomerulus happens filtration. So here is the place where we get the primary urine, okay? Here is produced primary urine. Now, primary urine, you know that is produced nearly 60 to 100 liters per day, okay? 60 to 100 liters per day. That's a big amount of the, and 90% and of this is a water, okay? So if we would lose every day uh, 60 to 100 liters of water, we would die, right? So we need to reabsorb this water. So after this happens, this filtration happens in the glomerulus, and this urine, uh, this urine goes to the, uh, this primary urine goes to the tubular part of the nephron. Here you see this tubular part. So for the tubular part, we have uh, proximal convoluted tubules, proximal convoluted tubules, which then turn to handless, turn into handless lobes, and then they turn into distal. Um, convolutive tubules, okay? So first we have proximal convolutive tubules, then handless lobe, and then we have distal convolutive tubules. Now, reabsorption occurs uh, in the proximal convolutive tubule and in the handless lobe, okay? So here happens reabsorption. After reabsorption, uh, how do you think how much of the uh, urine is left? 1.5 to 2 liters of the urine and that is a secondary urine and secondary urine enters the distal convolutive tubules after that it's ready for excretion right secondary urine so it goes to the straight or collective duct 
straight or collective duct and then it goes to the, I told you we have a papilla in the pyramids, right? It goes to the papilla and enters uh, this minor calyxis. You see how it's leaking urine. So these are already in the calyxis, okay? So that is the way what goes the urine. Now, um, this, uh, wait a minute, please. Okay, I don't know. Well, this handless lobe and also a straight or collective, um, collective tube is located in the pyramids. So, handless lobe and straight or collective tube is located in the region of the pyramids. Okay, right here. While this uh, tubular part, proximal and distal tubules, are located in the cortex here. So in the pyramid we have handless lobe and we have um, straight collective, straight or collective uh, duct and here we have um, these uh, tubular parts which are proximal and distal tubules and also um, we have their uh, glomerules, okay? I mean this, uh, um, this I mean glomerulus along with the with its afferent and efferent arterioles and along with its capsule, everything. Now, this whatever we were talking about, these nephrons are cortical nephrons. But we have the second type of the nephrons which are called juxta, juxta medullary nephrons. Now juxta means itself close. So close to medullary part. These juxta medullary nephrons are located in the region of the colons near pyramids, near the medullar part here. So, this type of nephrons, now what's the difference between these nephrons and uh, typical nephrons? If you look at this picture, you can see that the diameter of afferent and efferent arterioles is different. And actually for the afferent um, um, arteriole, the diameter is twice as big as for the efferent arteriole. Why do we need that? We need that because for the process of filtration, we need uh, high pressure. So this fact here and also the uh, structure of the glomerulus creates a high pressure. That's how it happens filtering. While in the case of the juxtamedular um, nephrons, the diameter of the afferent and efferent uh, arterioles are the same. So it starts to work I mean, it's not creating high pressure. So when it starts to work, it starts to work where a person has a high pressure itself, pressure itself, okay? In that case, uh, juxtamedullar nephrons are start, start to work when a person has a high pressure because we don't need additional high pressure. So the three processes are occurs in the, uh, in the kidneys. Which processes? First of all, filtration, then reabsorption, and then we have excretion, right? Okay, now um, this is your next material.